Today we are going to discuss about A.R. Desai. He was an Indian sociologist and he was very much inspired by Karl Marx, Frederick Engels and Leon Trotsky. When we talk about the Marxist sociology, he was one of the pioneers who used Marxist methods in India. He mainly focused on historical materialism and was one of the first to introduce modern Marxist approach in India. His approach included bibliography, field research and empirical investigation. He said that there is nothing unique about Indian culture. He also said that tradition is a secular phenomena with its roots in economics. So when we talk about historical materialism, we know that we need to get into some information based on the research done already or text and literature from history. Also, he said that economics or what Marx said, the root cause of all kinds of inequality lies in the distribution system that is there in the society. I have written some of his works here. You can take a quick look. Moving ahead, he said that the gap and contradictions in the social transformation is India is because of the growing nexus among capitalist and petty bourgeois. So you see how Marx talked about the same. He said that there is a nexus that is only a relationship of cash transaction between the capitalist and the bourgeois. He said that the same case is in Indian culture as well. So there is nothing unique about it. He has also used uh, the method of production relations to interpret all the changes that were taking place in the society. How we moved from the industrial revolution, all the changes that took place in the society with the emergence of industrialization and production relations. For example, the rich became richer and the poor were became becoming more poor and were getting exploited. When we talk about Indian sociology, he has talked about five ideas at length. First idea is on the birth of caste. According to him, the Aryans invaded India and they called for separate residences as they considered themselves superior than the people living in India. Now, these so-called superior people, they started calling themselves Brahmins and the occupations of the people other than the Brahmins, the tribes specifically, were it was rigidified and dictated by, by the Brahmins only. Now what else they did was they also backed this fact by literature and classical text. They started writing about their own values and traditions and how they were superior and how the other classes and tribes were inferior. So there was this backup that they had that if they had to prove their superiority, they could always show the classic literature and texts. His second idea was about Buddhism and Jainism. He said that Buddhism and Jainism, although they were non-Brahmanical movements, but their main idea was just to give other castes the power and status that the Brahmins enjoyed themselves. So, it was nothing but just a religion to counter the power and status that the Brahmins enjoyed alone. On classes in India, he said that there is a master and service or master and servant kind of relationship between the uh, upper and the lower caste people. There is also a dialectical economical relationship where there is only a transaction of cash and no other feelings or emotions or any other thing is associated with the same. This, uh, this kind of relationship is the same as the western relationship where there is a relationship between the master and the slave. So it is synonymous with slavery. On feudalism in India, he has talked about that how indigenous industries, they, lo they started losing their charm when the factories, they started taking over them. 
so what happened when the britishers they established their own factories they were more equipped and modern and they had better techniques and technology therefore the fact the industries that were there in india the small industries they started losing the charm what happened was the feudals they wanted to maintain their power and they wanted to be strong so in order to be strong they had to take over the land whether it was by indigenous industries or the western industries that took over the small ones so the feudals they did not have to do anything with the poors only they were interested in the power that was associated with holding the land his ideas on the revolt of 1857 he said that there was a clash between rising capitalism and declining feudalism he said that there was nothing national or uh, patriotic about the revolt of 1857 it was totally an economic disturbance an economic clash between rising capitalism that was because of the britishers and declining feudalism because the feudal the feuds they were losing their power slowly and gradually and they were losing control over land and labor as well on indian national movement desai said that it was nothing there was a hidden agenda there was nothing patriotic about it the feudals the people in position they were losing their power so they wanted to maintain the powers they wanted to uh, you know enjoy the powers of opportunities status and jobs especially at the administrative level which the britishers were taking away from them so in return they tried to provoke the mass in india the common people they tried to provoke them and they called it as the national movement but actually it was a hidden agenda to grab the jobs and opportunities that were being taken away by the britishers now as you know that his theories were always influenced by marx and they looked only at one side of the coin and not the other therefore his theories were criticized let us see the criticism one by one first is by sc dubey who said that development programs have transformed communities in india it is not that everything is in the favor of the upper class people only the government has initiated and developed many programs that benefited the lower class people as well Andre Bethe said that he has exaggerated the role of economics in history because he said that everything was based on cash nexus and he has ignored the other parts Yogendra Singh said that marxian theory never looks for alternatives to social change they only suggest revolution they do not look for alternatives Gail Omvet said that India cannot be classified into two extreme classes by two extreme classes he means haves and have nots but India is very diversified so we cannot classify uh, the people into just two classes because there are many classes all of them have different relations with each other different needs like the tribal people or the minorities Next criticism is by M S Gore who said that cooperative movements in India are successful he said that cooperative movements which uh, target the uh, small and medium industries cottage industries and the welfare of uh, say women in villages they have been very successful in India and have empowered the people in rural areas he was also criticized because his theory lacked empirical merit in understanding post colonial development in india now to summarize it ar desai has given a very critical perspective of what india was then although he was one of the first sociologists in india to study the society through marxist approach he rebelled against the oriental understanding of the indian society and he stressed that indian society should be studied from what was happening in the society at that point of time 
The socialist pattern is a hoax to create illusion and to confuse the mass. The real intentions are development on the lines of capitalism. This is what Desai thought of what was happening back then after the national movements, during the national movements as well. He also said that bourgeois, the dominant class in India and Indian society is based on capitalist economy. So there is a big clash between these two ideas. When bourgeois, the dominant class in India, how come Indian society is based on economy? capitalist economy. That means it is fair to say that the bourgeois or the lower class people or the petty bourgeois in this case, they will always be exploited because the basis of economy is capitalist. His approach can be applied in understanding Indian social reality and economic interpretation of the Indian society. So as we just discussed, he has talked about or discussed one side of the coin, but that one side of the coin is very helpful in explaining the economic interpretation of the Indian society. Let us discuss some questions now. Question number first is, A.R. Desai has pointed out many factors for the rise of Indian nationalism. Identify the correct set of factors. So in these options, you can see that the sixth option is electronic media and Desai has not mentioned electronic media anywhere. So the correct answer will be B. So the answer is option 1 to 5 are correct and sixth is not the right answer. Second question, who used the Marxian theory while analyzing the Indian class structure in agrarian relationship? So we just discussed how the feudals who still want to, you know, uh, keep up with their power and status, how they exploit the slaves and they encourage the industries over the indigenous productions. So the answer will be Desai who used Marxian theory and analyzing class structure and agrarian relationship. I hope you got the lecture. Thank you for watching.